If you haven't had Persian crispy rice, it's called tariq. Welcome to Iran, a country that's probably the most misunderstood place on earth. Today I'm in its capital city to see just how far my money goes as a visitor. The population of this country is a whopping 84 million people, making it the 17th most populous nation. I'm giving myself a budget of $30 to see what I can get. This is Iran. Today I'll be having traditional Persian food, but also going to modern malls to get to know how the city is evolving. Because of inflation, most people here use bank cards for every purchase, but I'm gonna try to pay with cash. I start my morning with this cool breakfast spot called Amu Husheng. Amu means uncle. I see the uncle himself who is running around dealing with the customers. This place is 90 years old. Oh, and there's a little bit of a wait. After getting a table, I order eggs, fresh bread, mint, and feta cheese. And of course, I also get a traditional Persian tea, which comes with a saffron sugar stick. Breakfast, $2. Next, I head to Tadrish, a traditional Persian bazaar, and it's a beautiful place to walk around and see traditional Persian sweets and foods. It will really take you back in time. Every day, thousands of people come here to buy food, household items, or clothes. The architecture here is stunning and an absolute must-see in Tehran. Next, I'm getting hungry already, but I want to discover a modern part of the city, so I come here. This is called Sana Complex. There are so many luxury stores here, and they have a food court here with all different types of of cuisine, but obviously I'm going for Persian food. This is called tachin. It's a Persian crispy rice cake filled with a stew or meat of your choice. Tachin bar is actually a chain with multiple locations around Iran and even in Canada. But because they cook it for you once you order, you have to wait up to 20 minutes for it to be ready. But let me just say it's totally worth the wait. They have all these different stews called gorma sabzi, badam jun, fesin jun, and they also have lubia polo and adas polo. I get my tachin with Gorma Sabzi, it's a famous Iranian stew with meat, and I pair it with fresh Persian salad, yogurt, and mint. And because these pitchers of drinks look so delicious, you can pick cherry, orange blossom, lemon, cucumber, and mint. I go for cherry. Tachin lunch, $7. This is so delicious. If you haven't had Persian crispy rice, it's called Tariq. Go and find a place that sells it because it's really, really good. By the way, to get around Iran, there is an app called Snap. It's pretty much like Uber or Lyft or Kareem, and it's very affordable and convenient. Each ride costs between $1 and $3, but I'll add up my total transportation costs at the end of this video. Next, I take a taxi to Iran Mall. It's my first time here, so let's go check it out. This is one of the largest malls in the world, and I totally get lost. I'm officially lost. I will say this is very big, and it's very easy to get lost, which I guess is to be expected um, in such a large mall. I also think I'm more likely to get lost because I don't recognize any of the stores. Like I said, there's no Zara or there's no like Burger King or anything. So maybe I have walked past the store here and there before, but I wouldn't remember it necessarily. It's kind of interesting because I've been walking around for like 20 minutes and I have yet to see a brand or a restaurant that I've seen before, that I've heard of before. And you know, I'm not totally surprised by that because Western companies largely are not allowed to operate in this country. But it's really interesting to see, like to go to a mall in 2022 and not see like an H&M and a McDonald's. Even though you can go to a mall in any other country, I'm mostly here to explore it and see how they have so many of their own brands you and me have never heard of. This is an interesting brand called Body Spinner. A lot of people wear this. This is an Iranian only brand. And I think because of what's been happening with sanctions and stuff, they've actually become a lot more successful. So a lot of Iranian brands are actually becoming more successful because they're not competing with any international brand. So now they're made in Iran and they're able to compete uh, with only other Iranian companies. This is the movie theater. This is where you can come. You can get your tickets behind me or you can also buy your tickets on a kiosk and go watch a movie. These are the movies that are playing right now. There is also this huge, gorgeous bookstore. This is so crazy how in the middle of this massive mall, you see this huge, beautiful library and there are statues of different philosophers. But I made a whole separate video about Iran Mall that you can go check out. By now I'm craving a snack, so I stop at this restaurant for some baklava and yes, another Persian tea. The price of this is $2. All right, so almost everywhere you go with the tea, they give you one and then you can just Put it in here and watch it melt away. That is delicious baklava. Next, I take a taxi to what's called Milad Tower. I'm about to go to the top of this tower. 
It's also known as Tehran Tower, and it's actually considered to be amongst the tallest structures in the world. I arrive at the base of it where you can use this kiosk to buy your ticket. There is also this replica where you can see how Milad Tower compares in size to other towers around the world, like the famous Oriental Pearl Tower in Shanghai. The price to go to the top, $2. Throughout most of Iran, it's rare to see tourists, but here you will find so many coming from different parts of the world. I walk around for a while and take in the views from the top. It's so beautiful up here and you can see all of Tehran. It's actually a very clear day. Sometimes there can be some pollution so it's harder to see but as of today you could see all the way from the mountains to the valley and it's really quite fascinating. That was really interesting. They sell an experience where you could do what's called the skywalk. So you can get a harness on and then you can actually walk at the edge. You can actually walk at the edge of the building but what's super interesting is that if you're a foreigner that will cost about $80 but if you're Iranian and you show a national ID that'll cost you only about 10 or 11 dollars. I'm debating doing it. I'm still not sure. Uh, I don't know. I've done it before in Macau, but I don't know if I'm up for doing it here. The woman was quick to say that all the equipment comes from the US and Canada, so there's nothing to be afraid of. I make my way back down and it's time to grab another snap. I go to this park called Gay Tariye Park. This is one of the oldest parks in Tehran. The energy of this place is really dynamic and a lot of people are coming here after work to socialize or walk their dogs. The vendors are selling selling famous Persian soup or corn on the cob. I also find these young Iranians who come here every afternoon and evening to sing under this gazebo. After hanging out at the park for a while, I grab another snap and head to this area called Tabiat Bridge, which means nature's bridge in Persian. It's a beautiful bridge they've constructed for pedestrians only and they have parks all around. This took them about four years to build and it opened around 2014. This place is really quite beautiful, such a good energy, such a good vibe, especially on a clear and crystal day. The weather's nice. I highly recommend coming around sunset because it's not too hot and the views are just beautiful. I walk around here where they're selling all different types of food. I finally settle on this Iranian restaurant, which by the way, there is again a lot of foreign food here, but because most Iranians regularly eat Iranian cuisine inside the home, when they eat out, it makes sense that they want to eat something new. But as a visitor here, obviously I'm going for Iranian food. I order this for my dinner. This is called Zeresh Palo. It's basmati rice with barberries, a staple of Iranian food. It's commonly served served with chicken and I also pair it with a yogurt drink, which my mom likes to call the Coke or Pepsi of the Middle East. The price, $5. Next, I walk around a bit more and then I grab another snap to head to this famous juice place. They have all types of juices here and it's a popular late night hangout spot. This is called Amu Safi, again named after uncle. There are so many options, but I go for this. It's a refreshing summer Persian drink. So this is a famous juice place here in Tehran. There is a long line for these juices. I got the traditional Iranian drink. Let's give this a try. The price, one dollar. That is a really interesting taste. Definitely something unique that you probably won't find outside of Iran. By now it's getting dark and I'm ready to end the day. But first, let's add up the receipts for all those car rides I took today. They came out to eleven dollars. So there. I did it. I spent $30 in one day in Tehran, Iran. I got to discover its historic side, but also explore its new emerging modern activities too. Thanks so much for watching. Let me know in the comments what was your favorite part and how would you spend $30 in Iran? Make sure you go find my other videos from around Iran and around the world and add me on Instagram and TikTok at Upton.